War. War never changes. Welcome to War Never Changes, your weekly video game podcast. My name is Jim, one of the merry men, joined as always by the man, the myth, the cackling one, 50 caliber Phil McCracken. Sir, how are you doing today? Dude, it was the it was the look at the screen and the smile right before you <laughs> spoke into the microphone. I knew it was coming, and I couldn't help it. It was that shit eating grin. That's how it works, and as the joys of being able to hit Alt C, the shortcut on my keyboard, which then begins the show, looking directly into Phil's beautiful eyes, saying the most obnoxious things right as I switch scene deadpan as usual and phil trying his best to maintain his composure but that's okay once again the well-traveled one in a hotel room in an undisclosed part of our great nation living the dream got his playstation with him are you ready sir for the newest hottest segment that we have made a staple of this show thanks to you trash or treasure you ready to go Sure. I got five things for you. And all I need from you is a simple word, trash or treasure. And you could elaborate if you want, but we'll wait till the end, okay? Okay. Number one, PlayStation 3. Oof, trash. Number two, nacho cheese Doritos. Treasure. Why would you have to think about that? I'm sorry. I know I broke my own rules. Why is that not an instant treasure? You made it seem like there's like maybe not like who doesn't like and I specifically said nacho cheese. I'm not doing that cool ranch horse shit. We're not doing that. Okay. So I haven't eaten Doritos in years. And I was trying to I was trying to think okay. what color bag is is nacho cheese because I don't like the blue bag. Yeah, that's the ranch. That's why I specific Okay, very good. Okay, very good. Number three, Xbox Game Pass. Treasure. Number four, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Treasure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you've ever played Mass Effect. No, I haven't. But you like it, so I'll just say treasure. Two more days. Two more sleeps, baby. Number five, Dr. Disrespect. Trash. Uh, I was just watching him earlier. Man, he gets me through every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon Eastern. The doc comes on and makes my day. Dude, people, rewind this and listen to the octaves in Jim's voice before I call Dr. Disrespect Trash and listen to how dis like <laughs> how noticeably disappointed his voice is afterwards. I was noticing there's a buffer. If I come back, I turn like really dark. And then if I come forward, the light, I turn yellow. You see that? You see the flash? It's, yeah. it's, like, it's like life before Phil. Life after Phil. <laughs> so kind of an interesting news week because not a whole lot happened it was interesting in that it was not interesting at all well you know we're recording on wednesday uh the 12th of may i'm sure as soon as we're done we're gonna have a thousand things to talk about um i did so good on my bangs before we started and look they're just drooping i didn't even notice you had hair until you mentioned it if I do this, I'm like trying to like get it way back, but it just tuck it under your ear cup. <laughs> My hair? You think it'll work? Oh, that looks great. <laughs> there, there we go. All right, so got a couple of things I want to talk about today. We'll see where the show goes. Clearly, some hijinks, some pandemonium as usual. We've done a little. We've we've already filled four minutes. I mean, we are rolling right along. Um, okay, so here's what I want to talk to you about, Phil. First and foremost, let me make a little timestamp here. Okay, first and foremost, Knockout City is finally almost upon us. Do you remember Knockout City? Yeah, see, I, <laughs> that's, why, that's the dodgeball game. That's the 3v3 kind of cartoony looking competitive dodgeball game that EA tried to like hype up and it didn't work. Oh, that you could like throw the footballs at each other or whatever. Dodgeballs, yes, but we can go with footballs if that's easier. Yes, the little the little red bouncy balls that you throw at people and they go. Arr! 
Yeah, this is like a recent game, right? Yeah, it's not out yet. I mean, it's actually coming. I, I did play the um, beta um, a month ago, and it was exactly what I thought it would be. One-dimensional? Yes, and very One boring. Dimensional. And after about two minutes, you were completely done, and I uninstalled it. <laughs> But I saw, an, I saw a YouTube advertisement for it today. Like, hey, everybody, remember me? I'm the zany announcer for Dodgeball. We're coming at you. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that game. And then I looked it up, and it's coming out, like, very soon. So do you think it'd be better if you were playing with friends? Like, playing by yourself no. is one thing. Playing with friends? <laughs> no. It, <laughs> only <laughs> if you... I guess... Yes. Okay, let me rephrase that. Any game, in my opinion, is better co-op period straight up i can never think of an experience of a game that i'm like i'd rather just play this alone given the option if i can play with friends that said this game is just not fun there's no coordination and it's exactly what you think it is it's very one noted very one dimensional and that's about it i call shenanigans i bet if you played with friends we could figure out a way to make it fun because we took forza horizons 4 which there's a lot there's a lot to do in that game you could do anything there's any different kind of race you could want any kind of car that you can think of and you took the warthog and i took a subaru and literally all we did was kind of chase each other around and talk shit in the woods that's that's all we did with that game that's That's true that's true i mean i guess in that sense gaming could be a backdrop for just like water cooler talk like we're going to play like uh, Red Dead Redemption and we're just going to walk around and grief the townspeople while casually talking about our personal lives. <laughs> yes, because we don't live near each other. This is how Jim and I hang out. Jim and I have never actually hung out in a traditional fashion. We've either been on a vacation in the middle of the ocean or sure. on the internet. Or That's on it. a salsa floor. But soon, in a couple of months, you'll be down here in the flesh again. And now I will see you. Now you've 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 passed customs and now I will actually see you. Dude, we should record we should record an episode together while I'm talking. Live at Disney Springs on a shaky cell phone camera talking like, hey man. <laughs> People like aloud and around us and it's the audio's horrible and my hair maybe be fabulous by then. You have to wait and see. Yeah. We should do a meet and greet. Only the Bob will show up. Yes. <laughs> Free autographs. For the Bob, that's it. Um, okay, so yeah, I wanted to bring up Knockout City because I feel like that came out at a time when there was no gaming news. And despite that, it came out at a time that, that there was no gaming news. Nobody cared. Still nobody cares. <laughs> and I feel bad because it seems like it's a pretty polished game. It really does. Like, it looks pretty. It played well. It's just dodgeball in of itself isn't that exciting. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a game that you're just going to be like, man, like, I got to get back into that, go- that goddamn dodgeball. Like, ooh. You know? You, you remember you had that that pinch for Warzone? I know it kind of faded a little bit right now. But, like, you would be at work and you're like, I got to get on Warzone. That's all you think about. No one's yeah. doing that with dodgeball. No one. Even people who are professional dodgeball players are not doing that. No. But in the spirit of not being hypocrites, let's not shit on them too much for trying something different. Let's shit on them. You know what the worst part is? They sunk at least $100 million in this game. <laughs> <laughs> and now, and they're, they're like, the, this asshole the, with the bangs, the with these long, luscious bangs, is, they're dumping on our game. This guy, he's the one with the Sea of yeah. Thieves backpack behind him? Dude, Eve is in his fucking office in, in Paris at the top of the Eiffel Tower or wherever the fuck going, Sacre bleu. <laughs> this, this, asshole, <laughs> this asshole with no hair. Not the game. <laughs> oh, man. Um, dodgeball game. <laughs> other news I don't think you really care about, but I feel like I want to bring it up just to get your reaction because you are now a member of the PC Master Race and you have been playing a little bit more in terms of we've kind of gotten you out of just the war zone. Like that's not all you play, a little, a little bit. So we're taking that and we're kind of like expanding the horizon. Um, are you? Do you have any interest at all in Overwatch? Are you even familiar with what Overwatch is? Are you interested in Overwatch 2? I don't know what Overwatch 1 is, so... So, no. Okay. Tell me all about it. Uh, it's a hero shooter where it is like a 5v5 deathmatch where you compete <laughs> in objectives. It's not deathmatch. So, it'll be like um, capture the flag type stuff. Like, you're doing an objective as a team. It's all about teamwork, and each 
character has a different role. You have tanks, you have healers, you have pure DPS, you have hybrid support, whatever. Um, very, very successful uh, tournament play spawned, as far as I know, the first ever professional esports league dedicated to a game where a lot of famous people bought into it. Like um, Mark Cuban owns a team, for example. Bon Jovi owns a team. Um, or they have professional tournaments, they sell out arenas, they do competitive matches, and it's a lot of fun. And I think it's six on six. I said five on five. I think it's <clears> six <throat> on six. Um, but it kind of died off because Blizzard as a company kind of died off and nobody really cared about it. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's kind of what happened. The lead director, Jeff Kaplan, he left. Um, so they just kind of went, I wouldn't say belly up, but kind of stagnant. But they announced that next week they are going to be showing off Overwatch 2 for the first time with a professional PvP exhibition match. It'll be like a 30-minute tournament of two professional teams playing this game to try to get you hyped up for it. Did Jeff Kaplan come back? Jeff Kaplan is not coming back. He might be in the audience like throwing tomatoes at Blizzard, but he is long gone. <laughs> I think he was at the company for 19 years, and he was basically the heart and soul of that game. So a lot of people speculate that you know, obviously the game isn't even out yet, but a lot of people are speculating that it's kind of like dead on arrival type thing. Dead in the water. Yeah. 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 I would play it with you. I'll check it out if you want to, but uh, we need to get through like, there is this one game that, uh, that you guys talked about for weeks and weeks and weeks, and you spent lots of time building boat shelters. And I finally, finally, finally got my PC in the mail. And then everyone stopped fucking playing it. <laughs> you know, goes, when I list. ask you what you want to play, when I say Phil, what do you want to play? And you say, Warzone? <laughs> All those times. And you do this too. You do, the, I see it. <laughs> you do the W, like we don't know. <laughs> Warzone? <laughs> what? You don't do the hand gesture when you, when you tell me Warzone? No. You do the Z with your arms? How do you do the Z? I can't do the Z. Only do the Z. You're not going to do the Z? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Just screwing with you, man. <laughs> My point is, you are a Warzone super fan. That's all you ever want to play is Warzone. All you ever want to play. So you know don't sit here. Whoa, 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 okay. pal. Don't sit here and tell me, oh, I want to play Valheim. And bullshit. All you want to play is Warzone. Like, all you want to play. So do not sit here and tell me that you want to play anything other than Warzone. Do not. That's a lie. I'm calling you out. I'll call you out, you motherfucker. You know that I don't want to play Warzone, and I haven't for like two weeks. We're taking a break. I'm sick of that fucking game. I don't want to play Warzone. In fact, I was kind of bummed out when you were like, we're going to probably have to play Warzone because it's the only thing that all three of us have. I was like, I don't want to do that. And then I got lucky two nights in a row because we didn't have to play fucking Warzone. So why, when you're home on the weekend, why don't you say, hey, let's play Valheim? Ugh. <sighs> I'm sorry. You're right. I just, I'm trying to. My wife misses me. I'm just so busy. I just try to be present with her. I don't remember the last time we played on the weekend. Sorry, I was we too busy flexing. Can you hear me over that? You know. Oh my god. Sorry. What? I hurt my shoulder. You have really disproportionately small arms to the size of your body. <laughs> it's my head. It's the head and the beard. My head is really like this thin. You just can't tell. Bro, when you flex your muscles, if it's like an even bar across your bicep, that's not. It's not a great. <laughs> um yeah listen all i'm saying is I, I just don't want to hear look i'm not picking on you about spending time with your family that's a totally i totally understand that i have a wife too and i get it you get the wife aggro you get the, oh it's mother's day weekend it's my birthday i get it listen i've been there but i'm telling you that when you when i ask you what would you like to play you can say i would love to play Valheim, I would love to play Among Us. I would love to play Forza 4, whatever. I don't know. Tell me. But not... I'd like to actually co-op through uh, Halo 4 with you. I've actually been thinking about that a lot. Oh, Halo couple. 4? Just Halo 4. Mm -hmm. it's cause, is it because Palmer and I started playing and you want to get in on that? I have my control. Oh, it's over what? there. You know what? Dude, you're right. You mentioned I that to me. <laughs> What, you know what it made me think of? Man, the sound effects in that game were awesome. And then I thought about some of the fun that we had. Oh, man. And now I want to play it again. I but play you, it again. If you and Paul were, if you, no, if you and Paul were playing through it, then Dude, forget no, it. Dude, no. I would I would play. You, I play I, – I've said this before, and I'll say it again. 
I play Halo every single day. I, I do. I don't think you played Halo at all this week. We haven't played Halo. I always log in every day and do my dailies at Master Chief Collection. I have not missed a day in, I don't know how long, five years, four years. I'm not kidding. You. No, we should check out uh, Rocket League this weekend. That's what we should Sure, I love Rocket about. League. Yeah, we should play that. You have to teach me how to play. Yep, it's very simple. It's like soccer, but with race cars. Oh, well, that sounds fun. Easy to, easy to understand, incredibly difficult to master. But the good thing is the ball bounces around so much that if you get this really trick shot, you're like, oh, I meant to do that. It's like, did you? <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't think you did. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, I'd like to play Among Us with you guys like on a Thursday night. I just, it's hard for me to make it happen Thursday nights because I'm not around, I'm not at home. Gotcha. I understand. Well, this Thursday, I won't be around, which is a great transition to a topic that I was going to talk about at the end that I'm going to talk about right now. I'll do a little copy paste in the show notes. And what I want to talk about is this weekend is the first time in a very long time that I am not going to be home for one whole night. And I'm going to take my Switch with me and actually play Switch mobily for one whole night. Like, not... <laughs> And not as an ironic statement. Correct. <laughs> I will most likely just play Pokemon Snap, which I haven't really played a whole lot of. Not because it's not fun, but because I've been playing other games. But I feel like Pokemon Snap is a perfect chill game on a mobile variant where the frame rate's not going to be as good. It's The battery's going to get hot. I'll probably get like a good hour and a half before this thing dies. And I feel like Pokemon is the game I want to play and ease myself out of gaming for a whole night. So we'll see. Um, but I was thinking about what, honestly, it's funny. I was thinking about you and how when you and I first started really becoming friends, you were the asshole that played Skyrim <laughs> on Switch at like eight frames a second. But not only did you play it, you like completely beat it. And then like you started again and you completely beat it. And you must have completely beaten that game like 30 times. You're like, oh, I'm at the part of the story where, and I don't even remember the story now, but it's like, I'm at the part of the story where blah, blah, blah. And like- Well, yeah, I wanted, I wanted to play as a mage, as a warrior and as a thief. That's hardcore, man. That's some, free, like that's, and I'm, I'm so surprised. I think that was probably, when did we go on the cruise? It was 2019 we went on our cruise. Uh, we we disembarked November 2nd, 2019. Okay, so like November of 2019, you were a hardcore Skyrim Switch gamer. And now, look at how far you've come. Yeah, I lug this gigantic monstrosity. <laughs> this thing weighs like 500 pounds. How did you pack that in terms of like travel? Like, travel. Did... I had to get my big suitcase. Normally, I have like a little like... A little um, roller carrier thing. suitcase that I travel with yeah. because the Xbox Series X is literally half oh, the size yes. and weight of this monstrosity, and I'm not fabricating that. So I had to get my big suitcase in order to be able to, like, I encase this thing in clothes. I was going to ask you, were you nervous about the – because I haven't really touched my PlayStation since I set it up. Um, I feel like there's that plastic piece at the top that like, I would be so afraid of that, like snapping. This is. I was going to say, were you nervous yeah. about that? Like kind of going like you like pack it like with socks all around so it what and stuff? I do is, you see this, you see this indentation here where the smooth surface of the actual unit is. Yeah. I will take an undershirt and I'll wrap it in here <laughs> oh, and then I wrap. I wrap the entire console in two sweaters and I put it on wow. top of the bed of clothes and I put more clothes on top of it. So I don't know if there's anything on earth that could break it, but it's certainly Damn. not going to get broken. Yeah, I feel like PlayStation really screwed up here on the travel portion of this. I haven't, I mean, COVID obviously, no one's gone anywhere, but like, well, I know you still travel quite a bit, but I used to travel all the time with my Xbox One X. Everywhere I went, that was constantly coming with me. It was compact. It was a perfect square, very easy to fit in pretty much any kind of suitcase. I could check that thing in. I was never worried about it being damaged because it was just so rigid and strong. Like that PlayStation, I feel like you holding it, I was afraid when you were gonna wiggle it, I thought you were gonna snap the corner off, like right then. <laughs> yeah, 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 no. I, I Because of how like, 
flimsy and temperamental it was when it first launched. Like, remember when we like turned this thing on and it sounded like a jet engine, and then it was oh, like, oh yes, yep, here we go again, it, right? I was afraid to look at it for like the first month that I owned it. Gotcha. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I'm surprised. And you don't use the stand, right? That is your stand. You just lay it like that, like you don't. No, the stand. The stand is screwed onto the bottom. It's right here. Oh, you do use this. Oh, okay. See. This is the other thing that was weird about PlayStation is they don't have the stand. If you, I have mine um, horizontally because if I have it behind mm -hmm. my TV, it, blo it blocks the, the drive and it just looks stupid. Um, but when you have it horizontally, the clip doesn't actually bolt into it. It just rests in there. It's like a plastic, right. v, like a plastic V and it just slides in and it's the jankiest solution I've ever seen. And I'm always petrified that I'm going to break it. <laughs> yeah yeah no that, it doesn't like, move for me if we can be critical i mean don't get me wrong i love this console i really do i really fall in love with it and the the, the ps5 controller is the best thing that's happened to gaming console gaming <laughs> in probably the last 15 years but this fucking thing they made like it looks nice but it's fucking like flimsy and is shit it's like he's got these cheap plastic fins on it and nothing about this thing makes sense ergonomically whatsoever. Agreed. And I think back to when we saw the the trailer, the live reveal of the PlayStation 5, and they showed off the hardware, and then they showed off the price and the release date, and we all collectively lost our goddamn minds. I think we were all like, ooh, it's kind of cutting edge. But then, like, you think about it from a practical standpoint, and you're like, why isn't it just a box? Why is it, like, it flares up? It's, it's not symmetrical. Yeah. Um, it's got these weird pieces on it. Like what were they, like we had a lot of plastic left over in the factory. It's like, put a fin on it. Yeah. <laughs> the PS5 Pro is going to come out and it's just going to be a fucking box. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They've learned their lesson. They're like, yeah, you know what? Like we're not, we're not doing this anymore. Oh my God. It's fucking great. No, this thing's massive and it's a pain in the ass to transport, but we're not playing Warzone anymore. So there's no point in me bringing my Xbox. I have to bring this PS5 around with me. Cause you're into, cause we're into modern warfare now or not modern warfare, cold war. Well, cause we do cold war and we do the division, division which is something I want to briefly talk about. I talked about it a little, it's a couple days ago. I did a video on it just talking about it, but Dude, we have missed the boat so bad on Division 2. I am not kidding you. We could play that game every day, probably for the next year, and we won't beat everything. It's a stupid amount of stuff that they've added. Stupid amount. Dailies, Even, progression. We just, played, hmm? we just played it a week ago. Did we really miss that much since then? No, we just, as you play further in, it unlocks more stuff. So, like... When you beat, like, Warlords, I was reading about this. When you beat Warlords, it adds in this new thing called the Summit, which is a hundred-story, like, horde mode tower. Like, you spawn in, and you just keep fighting harder and harder enemies to the top. And you get loot based on that. Sounds cool, right? They've added yeah. manhunts, where you have to go take out all these sub-lieutenants to take out the big person. Yes, dude. There's yes. other locations outside of the main, outside of New York and Washington. There's like a, a college you go to, Coney Island you go to, all these places. There's all these. I'm not kidding you. Like the amount of things to do, it's like a scroll, and they they're still doing shit. I'm like, why is nobody talking about how much free stuff is in this expansion mm. or content? Just the base game, like it blows my mind. Good guy Ubisoft, and I know. Sexual harassment, I understand, but good guy Ubi. Like, as far as games are concerned, good guy Ubi is good, you know, good guy Ubi gonna good guy Ubi, you know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I, I'm hoping that we can play the Division 2 tonight and take, maybe take a break from Call of Duty. We got plenty of time with Battle Pass. Yeah, we're doing good on Battle Pass. I suspect my big obsession with Battle Pass will occur if and when we can play as John Rambo, the man of the myth, the legend, that rock star hair with the bandana. Now, here's my question with Rambo. His main gun was that, obviously, like, okay, let me ask you this. I don't want to put any thoughts in your head. What, what would you say Rambo's main weapons are? I would say his main weapons are his tactical knife with the removable bottom cover and the internal, right. the internal storage chamber. And I believe that, like, one of the most famous scenes of that movie, I believe he was holding an M240 SAW so, uh, light machine gun. Yeah, okay. I was going to say the machine with the grenade launcher at the bottom. I don't remember the variant of the machine gun. 
I would say the big giant Rambo knife, and I would say a flaming bow and arrow, or like his primary three weapons. And I'm thinking like, I could see those three weapons, Rambo, probably like 25 bucks. It would be the happiest I've ever been since I bought the Glam Park skin, which I exclusively play with. Dude, you have gotten some mileage out of that That's all I play. That's all. I really wish you would play with something different. I'm sick of seeing that girl. Too bad. So sad. Get in line. Um, it's just fun, dude. And you know what? When I'm like either at the top of the when I'm at the top of the leaderboard, everyone's like, "Oh my god, it's a dumb girl." And when I'm at the bottom of the leaderboard, they're like, "Screw that dumb girl." So <laughs> it kind of writes its own narrative. <laughs> dude, you used to be consistently, no matter what, at the top of the leaderboard. You're slipping lately. I'll tell man. you what it is. It's the it's my prop. Elite controllers over there. It's being char- It's charging because it's dead right now. But the elite controllers stick tension is less than the dual sense of stick tension. So I can snap faster on my computer than I can on my PlayStation, and I got lazy. So I need to adjust the settings on my PlayStation to make up for the mechanical tension. I'm telling you, dude. I have had to adapt it's to the habit. Of- holding down the trigger button like on the playstation controller to just the point where you're about to put on tension because there's like 20 percent of that yes. depression yes where it, it doesn't do anything the and then zone. you meet that resistance and that's where you die and it throws off like it throws off the way you hold the controller also i was actually just thinking about adjusting the sensitivity on the sticks because the fucking p the playstation controller it moves so slow i can attribute at least 20 percent of my yes. deaths to how slow that controller reacts. I'm wondering, as much as I love the dual sense haptic feedback and the insane vibration that you get and the extra tension that you get, I feel like if I turn that off and just went to like basic bitch vibration, I would be a thousand times better. <laughs> I really do. Like, I don't know, is that the trade off? Like, do I care that I'm getting 40 kills a game anymore? Maybe I don't because it feels so good getting like 20, but I don't know. The- The stroke of R2 is so long that even without that tension, you're still losing engagements. I got you. It's a long pull. I got you. Think about how much – think about the curve and how much you have to pull down on that compared to just the depress on a PS – on a DualShock or fucking clicking your mouse button. Yeah. I'm shooting you now. Meanwhile, I've been dead. For yeah, exactly. Load the cannon. There we go. Yeah, I'm with yeah. you, man. I'm I'm wondering if that's what it is. I've gotten lazy playing a lot of Halo with my Elite controller. I've played a lot on my keyboard and mouse. I know it's snappy. I play a lot of run and gun with an MP5, no scope, jumping around corners, sliding, being a monkey, being crazy. Uh, and on the PlayStation, I can't be that way. I have to be more methodical and slow. And I think you're, I think you're seeing that. I think that's what's happening with me. Okay. Um, moving on off of Warzone and Call of Duty. Xbox Game Pass. Uh, been a lot of discussion about that. Xbox, first of all, I didn't know this. Did you know Game Pass is still running at a loss right now? I'm not surprised at all. I kind of thought they wouldn't be because they have like 40 million active subscribers and they're buying all these shitty cheap games that have to be like worth nothing. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like I feel like them getting the exclusive rights to like some really old boring game can't cost them much at all, but they throw it in the library. Look, look, we have some like really crappy indie game from seven years ago. I wonder what their hosting costs are. That's a good question. I assume that they're I assume they're seeing more network tension than normal, but I would assume a company like Microsoft probably is already pretty infrastructured up considering Office 365 is now an online service and they've heavily leveraged into Teams and some other remote services. I got to imagine that they were prepared for that. I just always thought the licensing fee was low, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's a lot more expensive than we thought it was. How how do I ask this question? Can you name? Can you think of a single time when you had a difficulty accessing Game Pass as a service? No, not even Microsoft has, as a service. Honestly, even when the yeah gone down. Has it ever gone down once? 
Not in recent memory for me, no. And I don't use it that often anymore, but no. It's not like PlayStation. Yeah. PlayStation, like a gentle breeze will knock that shit out for weeks. Um, yeah. But Microsoft, no. They've been pretty rock solid this generation. I got to give them credit yeah. for that. That doesn't happen cheap. Right, yeah. Right. So I'm guessing maybe there is a lot of network redundancy. Um, not only about the, the loss part, but um, they've been continuing to drive towards this concept. And this was from a, an article I read, but basically they call it the central aspect of gaming. And they're saying they're seeing a lot of return on investment because if you have Game Pass and I have Game Pass, we instantly together as friends have over 100 games that we can both play right now. As opposed to like, hey, you want to play this game? Oh, I don't have it. Oh, you have this one? I am not like... Game Pass being that like focal point. I know this isn't really so much of a new concept, but I guess Microsoft is saying and, and this reporter and kind of what they're driving towards is like, you don't need anything else. Just play Game Pass. Even if they're older games, who cares? Like it's an instant library. It's an instant portal to you with your friends. And, you know, you'll have fun playing Titanfall too. It's six years old. Who cares? But you'll have fun playing it because you're all playing it together. There's no excuse anymore. Right. I thought that was an interesting, interesting report. I wonder how much of a loss they're operating at and when they're going to adjust the cost of the subscription fee. It's going to go up, right? You know it has to. There's no way they can keep this. With all these super cheap promotions, a dollar a month, uh, you know, to get started, I think it's like 15 a month. It seems still very low for what it is, especially when you start adding in all these originals. That's when you, I think you see the cost start to go up. Well, it's also... You know, whatever the whatever the cost to invest in it and get it off the ground or whatever that they were trying to recoup, I guarantee you, and, and they got their money back, I understand, but Minecraft and um, Bethesda, yeah. they represent $10 billion in acquisitions in the last, you know, since the birth of this concept. And uh, that shit's kind of difficult to overcome, man, especially when you're operating at a loss. So I True. Uh, no, you're right. I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. That the good good guy Microsoft, like, thanks. I don't know because uh, when it does go up, how much is it going to go up? Because people like the average subscription cost is fourteen ninety nine for Netflix, Hulu, yeah, whatever. That seems to be like the number that people are. It's like just enough to where you can have that and like not really notice it. Right. You only notice it when you have all of them and they pile up and it's like eighty dollars a month. You know what I mean? So how, how much can they charge before people say no? Do you think that's why we haven't seen a lot of games from Xbox yet in terms of like first party titles because they just don't have enough money to throw at them because they're knowing that you have a lot of leeches, for lack of a better word, on Game Pass where, you know, the, the money spread so thin. Do you think that's what's going on? Or I mean, what do you think that attributes at all to the lack of new games from them, I guess? Let me ask it that way. Yeah. I think that that's an interesting theory. Microsoft has more money than God. Yes, and they they've do. Shown that. They've shown that. It would be interesting, and this is not a direct answer to your question because I don't have an intelligent way to articulate a thoughtful answer, but I will say this. It will be interesting to see at the release of Halo Infinite if there is a price increase. Ah, okay. So you think that... Yeah, I had wondered about that, if they were going to change some pricing down where they are going to say, hey, look... Um, you like these games and you want to keep microtransactions out, this is the way it has to be. You're going to have to give us just an extra dollar a month, you know, for a dollar a day, you too can save the Master Chief from, you know, like, I don't know. Like, um, it makes you wonder if they are running at a loss and they're not really getting a lot more engagement in hardware and you're not buying into the service to span off, people aren't running out and buying old DLC from Titanfall. I keep using Titanfall as an example because that's what we're playing, but any of these old games. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, my, people are like, wow, that's a great value. Thanks. What else you got? You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't seem like it's a stepping off point the way I think they wanted it to be. Well, you have to realize in the acquisition of these assets, i.e. the development firms that they're acquiring, uh -huh. that's all well and good. And you pay up front for the IP and the talent, the infrastructure and all that stuff. But Starfield is still in development. Yes. Um, they're going to they're going to throw at least five hundred million dollars at that. If, if depending on what point in the cycle they are, uh, Elder Scrolls six is still yet to come. And then whatever else, any of these tertiary studios that they get with that, you know, whatever's coming down the pike, we're talking about in the next three years at least an additional three billion dollars in expenditure for the development of these triple a titles gotcha. so gotcha. i mean we just took in and and the upkeep on minecraft the the upkeep that they must have to do in the server space that that requires must be gargantuan so i mean i would agree 
the fee structure. <laughs> and the more I think about it, the more insane fifteen dollars a month sounds. What a deal! What a deal that is. It is, but you know, I, I guess if you're Microsoft and you're looking at this, yes, you're collecting a lot of money. Uh, hopefully, you've negotiated some pretty good contracts on these old games that just kind of are fluff to the service that you don't care about. Um, you are giving away all your first party games though for free now. So well, I say for free, but you know, you're you're including that in the service. You're doing all these deals like. You get free month of Spotify or free, you know, free hamburger or burger. Like they're doing, they're constantly doing like these little gimme, you know, kind of bonus things, which obviously have to cost them money as well. Um, they're, you know, and they really invested a lot in you getting into their ecosystem and it's a great jumping off point. Based on what I'm hearing, I just don't see a world in which they ever break even if that's the case. I don't see a world in, oh, just 2 million more subscribers. Well, yeah, but you just acquired 30 studios. You got to put those guys to work and you got to promote the next big game like it seems like they're always going to be chasing their tail yeah and, and they, they they've been selling consoles at a loss for the entirety of the time that they've been making xboxes right. and you know because they're going to make money on games in theories but now that they've laid out all this money to like buy these studios and they're operating at a loss and giving these games away for free i wonder what what part of that organization is profitable and to those of you you know, criticizing Phil Spencer for not giving it a definitive answer on whether or not, um, you know, Bethesda is going to be Xbox exclusive moving forward. I have your answer. Yes. Yes. It's going to be console exclusive moving forward. Um, and maybe they'll, maybe the way that they're going to make money is they're going to license out some, some of the content from some of their smaller studios to different, to different platforms. That's possible, maybe yeah. they'll do a deal with Epic. Maybe they'll do a deal with Epic and, or fucking Sony or whatever the fuck. But, uh, I would love to be a fly on the wall during their P&Ls. I, I would like to see what part of that company is actually making money. Yeah, I, I, I feel like the gaming division is probably in one of those situations where Phil's going, hey, look, look at the huge growth we've had. And, and you know, we've already gained 20 million subscribers in the first three months. Give me another three months. Let me get us another, you know, but you're spending so much money to get there. I, I just don't see where you're gonna capitalize on that. And then, like you said, with Bethesda, perfect example, you know, PlayStation has dominated the console market since the launch of PlayStation 4. That remains true to this day. They're still out selling Xbox. People still want Playstations. They're harder to get. People are still demanding them. You lose a monstrous part of your sales when you are Bethesda and you say, hey, Elder Scrolls 6 is now an Xbox exclusive. So you have to recoup that money as well, and you're never going to get that back, I don't think, by selling more subscriptions. And if you do, they're going to be short term. People are going to subscribe and then move on. Hey, I beat it. See you later. Cancel. I don't know. Man. It's interesting. I mean, but I'm, look, I'm not a financial person, and Microsoft is run by people much more intelligent than me. Um, no, but it's just an interesting thing to wonder about. You're so right, though. Think about it. I can either pay 60 or $70 for this game and I'm still going to have to install it. Or yeah. I could sign up for a dollar a month or $15 a month, whatever stupid promo is going on. Right. I right. could play through this game in a month and then cancel the subscription. And I just got, you know, I just got to play that game and have that experience and whatever for 15 bucks as, as opposed to 60. I don't, <clears throat> This this is a really interesting topic. It's really, I would be I will be interested to see how this all shakes out in the end. Same, and, you know. I remember when Game Pass was announced. I remember turning to my wife and laughing and saying, "I will own Game Pass until I die, and I will make so much. I will make so much money on this because I don't have to buy Sea of Thieves. I don't have to buy Master Chief Collection. I don't have to like. And I'm getting so much value. Not really Sea of Thieves right now, although there is a Th Sea of Thieves backpack behind me. A little prop there. Um. I'm getting a lot of value in this right now because for someone like me who buys pretty much every first party game that comes out, you know, I'm saving money in that sense. Um, I wonder, you know, as time goes on though, yeah, they're going to have to do something. Either their library is going to diminish or they're going to have to include more microtransactions or whatever. A game like The Division is a perfect example. The Division was a full price game. It's trickled down to a small amount. They do nickel and dime you a little bit. If you want to unlock like the flamethrower, it's an extra like 20 bucks. But you don't have to. You can get the crossbow for free. Um, but they, they might be able to get you a little bit here or there. 
But in a game like Halo coming out, Halo, it's going to be, a, according to Microsoft, a 10-year game, whatever that means. You're telling me you're not going to include any microtransaction and you're going to absorb my fee of you know 15 a month spread across all these games and you're going to be able to make quality content without charging anybody any other pennies for Halo content? It just doesn't make sense to me. So, I don't know. Um... Eighteen hundred dollars a user over ten years, so fifteen dollars a month if it doesn't go up. Times twelve, times ten is eighteen hundred bucks. So how many subscribers do they have? Why is it wait fifteen fifteen dollars a month times twelve months? What's the ten for? Ten years. Oh, you're talking about ten years. Okay, I'm ten year game. So hey, how many uh, Game Pass subscribers are rough estimate? I think they said forty million right now. Just doing math. That, that iPhone smoking. Yeah. <laughs> Carry the one out of three. Dude, dude, dude. It's a lot of money. I know. It's going to be a lot of zeros. I just... And... $72 billion. Okay. That's a lot of money. <laughs> it really is. Now... And that's if they don't gain a single player when it releases. Right. That's if it stays at $40 million. And they're going to, when Starfield releases, they'll gain probably 10, they'll probably gain between two and five million people. When Halo Infinite releases, another two and five. So let's let's bump those numbers up to over the course of the next 10 years, right. 60 million. So let's. Uh... Yeah, you've got to assume while you're doing that math, you know, you've got to assume a good selling game. You know, a good selling game doesn't sell nearly that many copies. Adoption rate may be like, I think God of War sold like 10 million copies or something, which, Mm -hmm. you know, still a lot of copies, but you're not talking that kind of money for sure. $108 billion. That's a lot of money, man. Um, Yeah. I mean, if, if they can retain that number of people consistently throughout and the numbers don't diminish and people don't say, eh, the games aren't that great or yeah, I'll play it for a month or two and I move on. Um, maybe that's the idea at, over yeah. time. It's going to pay for itself, but as some people drop off, more people are going to come in though. So let's say the closer number, you know, with the kind of games that we're talking about, the, the, the subscribers that they're going to climb onto, it's not going to be a small up- uptick. It's going to be a big uptick. Oh yeah. And oh, as, yeah. You, as you ebb and throw, they're still going to maintain probably over the course of the next 10 years, I'd be shocked if it dipped below 57 million subscribers at one given time. And that's only a couple, that's only a couple billion dollars. That's still a hundred billion dollars from just that one game. I think the subscription model works as long as people are feeling they're getting a new exciting value. If Netflix stopped making original movies and shows and content, people would check out. You would still have people stay because there's like, look at this huge catalog of stuff for me to get through. But you see it as well as I do that the top 10 trending is always the hot new show. And everybody's talking about it. You got to go see show X. If Xbox can't hold that, to me, that's where the problem is. They have so many studios that are still not doing anything. They're going to have to deliver some major hits that aren't just a flash in the pan. Otherwise, people are going to move out. That's my thought. $15 a month is the magic number to where somebody is not going to care. I, I can tell you with a certain degree of honesty that I have owned Game Pass for well over a year now. So I'm, you know... Let's say I'm a I'm a hundred and something dollars into it, almost two hundred dollars into it. Right. All right. I have spent a cumulative eight hours playing games on Game Pass. It just keeps renewing because I want to keep my status with the service. I'm grandfathered in at that price. Not that there's been any price hikes or anything, but I don't want to. I I'm I'm grandfathered in with the service. I don't want an interruption. I want to be able to get on there and use it if we ever decide, hey, we're going to play Master Chief Collection tonight. I don't want to have to go through the rigmarole of signing back up for it. Um, I, I just let it roll. And there's nothing on there that I have a particular interest in, but I just keep letting it roll. And I think that that <laughs> I think that that's why they have this. They're having the success that they're having. Yeah, I guess, you know, it's obviously they put a lot of thought into this and obviously Phil and the team really believe in this. And it's good to see that they're backing this. I just I think at some point reality is going to set in for people that 
you know, sometimes you quality and quantity, they do play off each other. And while PlayStation is releasing less games, but bigger hit games, and Microsoft is just dumping game after game onto the service that are largely forgotten after a short amount of time, eventually people are going to say, okay, I am tired of playing shovelware. I'm tired of playing these games that um, look were interesting, but they weren't or whatever. And I think people are going to get tired of it. We shall see. All right, man. Well, it was a good discussion with you, sir. Uh, work calls for me. But as always, we always end the show on what we call Phil's Farewell. Much like my love for Jim will never end or also never changes.